as falls the eventide, the darkness deepens, Lord, with me. and welcome to worship. Before we begin, just a couple of announcements. First, the diaconate will meet today, Sunday, September 5th, at 10, after the 1015 service at the church in the ladies' parlor. The Board of Finance will meet on Tuesday, September 7th, at 630 in the ladies' parlor. And finally, Sunday, October 3rd, I will be participating in the Prop Walk in New Salem. And if anybody would like to join me, either by walking or sponsoring uh, the walkers, please be in touch with me and I will get you all of that information. Now, as we turn our hearts and minds to worship, let us consider these words. Though the storms of life may rage around us, we gather here to praise our God who calms every storm. Peace, be still. Let us praise God. The call to worship is based on Psalm 146. The response is, Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh, my soul, do not put your trust in princes, in mortals, in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh, my soul. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry, the Lord sets the prisoners free. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh my soul. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind, the Lord lifts up those who are bowed down, the Lord loves the righteous. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. Today we keep in our prayers Brenda Barnes, Kent Lawson, Ron Fournier, Missy Chasen, Laney, Justin Arnott, and Bonnie Arnott. Let us pray. God of constancy, 
We give you thanks for your covenant with us, shown forth in the rainbow of hope. Give us space to reflect, time to learn, and confidence to work for a fairer and more just time when the whole world can unite with your love. We pray that you let the rain come and wash away ancient grudges, bitter hatred held and nurtured over generations. Let the rain wash away the memory of any hurt or neglect. Let the sun come out and fill the sky with rainbows. Let the warmth of the sun heal us wherever we are broken. Let it burn away the fog so that we can better see each other clearly, so we can see beyond labels, accents, gender, or skin color. May the warmth and brightness of the sun melt our selfishness so that we can share the joy and feel the sorrows of our neighbors. And let the sun be so strong that we will see all people as our neighbor. Let the earth nourished by rain bring forth flowers to surround us with beauty. And let the mountains teach our hearts to reach upward toward heaven. We pray these things in the name of your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The scripture reading today comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 6, verses 16 through 22, and chapter 9, verses 8 through 15. Make a roof for the ark, and finish it to a cubit above, and put the door of the ark in its side. Make it with lower, second, and third decks. For my part, I am going to bring a flood of waters on the earth, to destroy from under heaven all flesh in which is the breath of life. Everything that is on the earth shall die, but I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall come into the ark, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. And of every living thing, of all flesh, you shall bring two of every kind into the ark, to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female, of the birds according to their kinds, and of the animal according to their kinds, of every creeping thing of the ground according to its kind, two of every kind shall come into you to keep them alive. Also take with you every kind of food that is eaten, and store it up, and it shall serve as food for you and for them. Noah did this. He did all that God commanded him. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, as for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as come out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh and the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. Here ends our reading. May God add to our understanding of it.
Growing up, I lived on Ararat Street in Worcester. That may sound familiar to some of you, some because you're familiar with the city, but also because of scripture. While it's not part of the passage we read this morning, we learn in the full story of Noah that the ark landed finally on Mount Ararat. When I heard this point of interest when I was about six or seven in Sunday school, I became convinced that if I dug around in my backyard, I would find Noah's Ark. And I spent countless hours digging holes and overturning rocks and looking for any evidence that a huge ship carrying all kinds of animals and people was buried somewhere in my parents' yard on Ararat Street. Of course, I never found the ark, but the story of Noah and his boat somehow became my story. I felt as though somehow I was part of the story. That is, until I was in high school. When I was about 16, a high school religion teacher introduced the idea that maybe some of the stories in the Bible didn't happen exactly as the Bible says they happened. She challenged us to challenge the Word of God and pushed us to ask questions like why and how and what about. One of the stories we studied was the story of Noah's Ark. And as she pushed us, I came to question this story that had been so close to my heart for so long. And all of a sudden I started thinking, you know, the fact that one man was able to gather up all these different animals and build a boat big enough for all of them and his family doesn't make that much sense. And I started to wonder if maybe Noah's story didn't go exactly as it's written in the Bible. But mostly, what I started to question as we studied this story more in depth is how a loving, compassionate, forgiving God, the God I believed in, could be the same God who had caused a storm that was so destructive it killed all but a handful of people. Suddenly, the story of Noah, his ark, the animals, and the flood took on new meaning. In my mind and in my heart, the story went from a cute nursery story to a deep tale with dark and scary details. And then the same teacher who t pushed me to challenge the story asked a question. And she asked, does it matter if this story didn't really happen the way it's told, or even if it didn't happen at all? In other words, she was challenging us to look at the message and the meaning of Noah's journey. As we look at Noah's journey this morning, we could debate all day about whether Noah and his ark really took sail for 40 days and 40 nights. And I know that there are some out there who believe that absolutely it happened, just as it says in the Bible, because that's what the Bible says happened. And I know that there are others who believe that Noah was a man who lived and was faithful and obedient to God, but maybe he didn't necessarily build the ark or put a bunch of animals on it and take a cruise around the stormy seas for over a month. I won't say that it doesn't matter whether or not it happened. What I will say is what is most important is what we learn from the story of Noah. There are messages, many messages, that can be gleaned from the three chapters in Genesis that tell Noah's story. I like the list that someone came up with. 
Lessons we can learn from Noah. One, don't miss the boat. Two, remember we are all in the same boat. Three, plan ahead. It wasn't raining when Noah built the ark. Four, stay fit. When you're 600 years old, someone may ask you to do something really big. Five, don't listen to critics. Just get on with the job that needs to be done. Six, build your future on high ground. Seven, speed isn't everything. The snails were brought on board with the cheetahs. Eight, when you're stressed, float a while. Nine, remember the ark was built by amateurs. The Titanic built by professionals. 10. No matter what the storm, when you are with God, there's always a rainbow waiting. The one I want to talk about this morning is the message that God is with us even, and I think perhaps especially, through the storms of our lives. We certainly know about the storms of life, illness of body and mind, the death of a loved one, loss of a job, marital discord, pandemics. The storms rage all around us. But our scripture lesson this morning reminds us that our God is the God of storms. We aren't left alone bobbing in a boat as the storms rage, but rather God is here with us. The problem with the storms of life is that we don't always, or perhaps ever, know what to expect. I remember many years ago I headed out to do some errands. The weather forecast had called for some flurries later in the day, but the skies looked clear and it wasn't all that cold, so I went out and ran my errands. When I went into one store, there wasn't a flake in the air. But imagine my surprise by the time I finished my shopping and made my way back to the car, about half an inch of snow had already fallen and the roads were icy. Then of course there are the times that the forecast calls for weather much worse than what really happens. When it comes to weather, we just don't know what to expect. Well, the same is true for the storms of life. Things seem to be going along just fine, with no indication of problems. When all of a sudden the phone rings and we get the news that a loved one has died unexpectedly, or that there's been a car crash, or you're handed a pink slip when you arrive at work. There are other times when it seems that everything in the world is against us. And then suddenly there's a glimmer of hope. Test results come back with results other than what we expected. Financial burdens are lifted by an unexpected windfall. The support of a friend or a loved one makes our burden lighter. The storms of life are unpredictable. We don't know when a sudden storm will flare up or when suddenly calmer seas will prevail. What we do know and what is constant in these storms is that God is with us. God is with us through the raging blustering storms. God is with us when the seas are calm. God is with us here and now, everywhere and every day. And so I leave you with this today. Did you know that an eagle knows when a storm is approaching long before it breaks? The eagle will fly to a high spot and wait for the winds to come. When the storm hits, it sets its wings so that the air will pick it up and lift it above the storm. While the storm rages below, the eagle is soaring above it. 
The eagle does not escape the storm. It simply uses the storm to lift it higher. It rises on the wings that bring the storm. When the storms of life come upon us, we can rise above them by setting our minds and our belief toward God. The storms do not have to overcome us. We can allow God's power to lift us above them. God enables us to ride the winds of the storm that bring sickness or tragedy, failure and disappointment into our lives. We can rise above the storm. Let us pray. God of the storms and the rainbows, we thank you that no matter what is happening, you are with us. Help us always to trust in you and rely on your presence always. Amen. As we go our way, God goes with us. So we are never alone. God's promises are sure and true. We will not be left alone and abandoned. So go and may the blessing of God who creates, redeems and sustains us be with us now and always. And may the Lord watch between me and thee while we are absent one from the other. Amen. I hope everybody has a great week and I hope to see you soon. Don't forget to sign up if you want to join me for the crop walk. Take care. Bye-bye.